Thank you for the great introduction. Today I will be presenting my work on how we developed surface plasma resonance imaging based nano aptosensor for the ultra sensitive detection of small molecules. Here's a brief outline of my talk. First, I will give a brief explanation about surface plasma resonance imaging technology, and then discuss the importance of small molecule detection. And after that, we will introduce to you X aptomer technology and how we went about engineering our SPRI, SPRI nano aptosensor for the detection of progesterone. The imaging component of Horiba's SPRI system allows you to visualize the whole of the biochip through a video CCD camera. This design enables the biochips to be prepared in an array format with each active spot providing SPR information simultaneously. The high resolution CCD video camera provides real time difference images across the array format with up to 400 active spots. It captures all of the local changes at the surface of the biochip, providing detailed information on molecular binding, biomolecular interactions, and kinetic processes. Data is recorded as intensity variation of the reflected light at a fixed angle for each region of interest selected. A digital image is produced in real time together with a relative sensogram. Now here's an example of the kinetic curve. Initial step is to functionalize the ligands on the surface of the chip and then you inject your sample and as analyte bind to your surface over time you will observe a change in the reflected light intensity. There is a satisfactory linear relationship is found between signal change and mass concentration of analyte. The SPR signal which is expressed in resonance units is therefore a measure of mass concentration at the sensor chip surface. This means that the, analy that the analyte and ligand association and dissociation can be observed and ultimately rate constants as well as equilibrium constants can be uh, calculated. Biomolecular interaction analysis is not limited to proteins. Interactions between DNA DNA, DNA protein, small molecules and proteins, and hybrid systems of biomolecules and non-biological surfaces can also be investigated. Now small molecules can have a variety of biological functions such as cell signaling molecules, drugs in medicine, pesticides in farming, they may have a beneficial effect against a disease or may be detrimental and also can be used as research tools to probe biological functions as well as leads in the development of new therapeutic agents. Some can inhibit a specific function of a multifunctional protein or disrupt protein-protein interactions. These compounds can be natural such as secondary metabolites or artificial such as antiviral drugs. Roughly, their molecular weight is equal to or below 900 deltons. For example, steroid hormones are a family of small hydrophobic analytes derived from cholesterol that have been the targets of many clinical assays from a variety of bodily fluids at very low concentrations. Our project goal is to develop a SPRI based biosensor that can detect a steroid hormone specifically ultra sensitively along with really good reproducibility. For a proof of concept we chose to work with progesterone which is composed of four cyclic hydrocarbons containing oxygenated functional groups such as ketones serve as an indicator of early pregnancy and participates in controlling hormonal levels throughout the, re the reproductive cycle. Its sensitive detection in diverse matrices can assist in fertility investigations. It normally ranges in level from less than 1 nanograms per ml in serum 
during the pre-ovulation phase of the menstrual, menstrual cycle up to 20 nanograms per ml in mid-cycle and to 300 nanograms per ml in, uh, in pregnancy. Now, immunoassay such as ELISA, electrophoresis chemolescence detection, and non-competitive uh, idiometric or fluoroimmunoassays have been the most widely used method for the detection of progesterone in different matrices. These tests require very carefully controlled procedures, skilled experts to carry out the analysis, and label probes to detect the steroid. However, the major drawback of these clinical tests is the high levels of interference arising from the structural, structural similarities of different steroid hormones. So, we decided to use aptamers as opposed to antibody to serve as our capture ligand for several reasons. First, is they're very flexible in the sense that you can uh, develop, develop them to bind to any target. In addition, I found out that they are more specific than antibodies. And here's the big plus, they are smaller in size. This was really important to me as it decreases the separation distance between my detection molecule and the sensor surface. Also, they have a longer shelf life, which is, an, which is another attractive feature. In the work that I will present today, we have developed x aptamers for progesterone using a commercial kit purchased from AmBiotech. And today, we are lucky because Dr. Curtis Lamb is with us to tell us a little bit about their kit and how it works. Thank you very much, Dr. Sandros, for the kind introduction and opportunity to present our X aptamer selection technology. Aptamers are oligonucleotide based affinity agents. As such, they act as antibody mimics. Aptamers can be used in all applications where antibodies are currently being used, and that includes diagnostics, therapeutics, purification, as well as biomarker discovery. By far the most well-known aptamer is pegatinib, otherwise known as macogen. This is an FDA-approved drug for the treatment of age-related macular degeneration. What I would like to talk about today is a special type of aptamer called X-aptamers. These are chemically modified DNA aptamers of enhanced function, and they are discovered using a rapid, non-conventional process. Here is a quick comparison of antibodies versus aptamers, as well as X-aptamers. Antibodies perform very well, they're sensitive and specific. The other aspects of antibodies, though, are much less desirable. Much of this has to do with the fact that they are discovered and produced biologically. The discovery process is slow and complicated. Batch reproducibility is low. Aptamers are also great affinity agents. The nice thing about aptamers, though, is that they are synthesized chemically and hence do not share most of the disadvantages of antibodies. Due to chemical synthesis, aptamers are much easier to label than antibodies. X aptamers differ from standard aptamers in two main regards. One, the modifications of X aptamers enhance the capabilities of them. And two, X aptamer discovery is much faster and simpler than traditional aptamer discovery techniques. On the next few slides, I will describe the selection process for X aptamers in detail. Here, I have a quick synopsis of it. The selection begins with a bead-based library that is synthesized by solid phase synthesis. Oligonucleotides on these beads are decorated with a wide range of chemical modifications. The petitioning steps are divided into two stages. The first is performed with the beads, and the second is performed in solution with oligonucleotides that are released from selected beads. After these two steps, the isolated material is amplified by PCR for next generation sequencing. Bioinformatics analysis will determine the sequences of the X aptamer candidates. 
Finally, X aptamer candidates are synthesized for characterization of binding. The bead based libraries are one bead, one compound libraries. Each library has anywhere from 10 to 7 to 10 to the 8 beads, and each bead is 15 to 20 microns in diameter and has billions of copies of the same sequence on it. Each copy of sequence looks something like what is shown here. There are primer binding regions on each end to facilitate PCR amplification. There are also built-in stem regions to promote secondary structure formation. The random region it is typically 30 nucleotides, and this is where the modifications are located. Pretty much any modification that does not interfere with PCR is possible. One extremely powerful aspect of solid phase library synthesis is the control one has in the placement of modified residues. If I have 10 T's, I can choose how many I would like to modify. I can also have different modified T's as well. Here I have three different versions of T. I have one residue, one red residue corresponding to five modified DU2. I also have three blue residues that represent five modified DU1. And finally, I still have natural T residues as well. Here is a sampling of some of the modifications that we have used. We have used indoles, boronic acids, phenols, phosphodithioase substitutions, and even larger modifications like this tripeptide. Each of these modifications add chemical functionality that's not present in normal DNA, and it is these modifications that make X aptamers a compelling alternative to antibodies. As I mentioned earlier, modifications must not interfere with PCR. As such, our modifications are added at locations that don't significantly affect the ability of DNA to form secondary structures. Thus, phosphorodithioase substitution is an analog of phosphate, and the remaining four are nucleobase modifications that are attached to the non-base pairing phase of deoxyuridine. For the first selection stage, up to three label targets are incubated with anti-label magnetic particles. After excess target is washed away, the magnetic particles are incubated with library beads. There will be a lot of library beads that have some associated magnetic particles due to either non-specific binding or low affinity, but promising library beads will have many attached magnetic particles. Using a magnet, predominantly promising beads are isolated. The library beads isolated here are then treated with sodium hydroxide to release X aptamer candidates from the beads into solution. In the second selection stage, the X aptamer pool is divided into five fractions. One is saved as a start control, and the remaining four are incubated with either targets. One, two, three, or no target. After incubation, anti-tag magnetic particles are added followed by magnetic pulldown. Each of the five fractions is then PCR amplified with barcoded primers and the resulting products are combined and sent off for next generation sequencing. Next generation sequencing generates millions of reads. It's quite common to have more than 500 megabytes of data. Data is analyzed by a software called Aptaliner that was developed at UT Health Science Center. This software counts the read numbers of individual sequences, it also adds modified residues as dictated by the library design, and corrects for PCR sequencing errors when possible. A table of ranked sequences is generated for each of the three targets based on read count. This table summarizes how candidates are selected. Desired sequences are those that have relatively high count numbers for the desired target compared to that of the controls and the other targets. 
X abdomers have been generated to a long list of targets. Here, I have listed a handful of these targets. Many of them are biomarkers for infectious diseases, but there is also a couple of toxins. These targets range in size from the sub-kilodalton histag to the almost 150 kilodaltons of botulinum toxin A. The targets differ significantly in terms of PI. Both acidic and basic proteins can be targeted. The affinities of exaptimers for these targets range from 74 nanomolar to 20 picomolar. The X aptimer discovery platform is simple, rapid, effective, low cost, flexible, requires no special equipment, and can be multiplexed. These attributes have allowed the creation of the X aptimer selection kit. Each kit has a beat based library and several barcoded primers. This kit allows a technician in any life science environment to select for their own X aptimers in the exact way they intend to use it. Logistically, the kit concept is relatively simple. The customer receives the kit, performs the two stage selection against their targets of interest, and then sends PCR product back to AM Biotech. That sample is processed and AM Biotech identifies the sequences of the putative X aptimers. These sequences are synthesized and sent to the customer for characterization. The time between receiving the kit and receiving X aptimer candidates takes as little as four weeks of time. Dr. Sandros's group was one of the first customers for the X aptimer selection kit. Her group selected for X aptimers against three targets, one of which was progesterone. After bioinformatics analysis of the next generation sequencing data, nine candidate sequences were identified. For the nine sequences shown here, the primary regions have been omitted. The TT is a library barcode, and the four nucleotide segments are the stem regions. Four of the sequences have complementary stems, while the remaining five don't. In the random region, the Ws represent indole-modified DUs, and the Ys represent phenol-modified DUs. The library that was used was synthesized with an average of 2.25 indole modifications and 1.5 phenol modifications. And 0 to 12 modified residues were possible for any given sequence in the library. For these nine, each sequence had at least one residue of each modification. The number of indoles and phenols were reduced each by roughly 25%, suggesting that not too many modified residues are necessary for progesterone affinity. Also, I would like to point out that five of these sequences are really similar. This section is likely to be the binding motif for the target. These nine sequences, as they are shown here, were then resynthesized by solid phase synthesis with 5' prime biotinylation and sent to Dr. Sandros' group for testing. Now, the aptimers developed uh, using the kit were screened for the detection of progesterone in the buffer 4% uh, acetonitra and 10 millimolar PBS, which is used to solubilize the progesterone. Now, progesterone is a highly, hydroph is highly hydrophobic, therefore acetonitra was utilized to solubilize the steroid and enable its detection in a water-based uh, buffer. The performance of each aptimer is presented in this figure, in which the nine aptimers evoked different SPRI signals after the injection of 50 micrograms per ml of progesterone. X aptimers 3, 5, and 4 resulted in the highest SPRI response upon the interaction with progesterone. Meanwhile, other X aptimers experienced a lower binding response, especially X aptimer 1, which showed a similar SPRI signal to the uh, interleukin 6 negative control aptimer. Furthermore, the kinetic profile of the three X aptimers was evaluated using the SPRI scrubbergen software, and the dissociation constant was determined to be 
21.74, 28.10, and 25.58 picomolar for axaptomers 3, 4, and 5, respectively. In the previous biosensing assay, we were able to do select several high binding activity aptomers from the library of aptomers developed that detected progesterone at a concentration of 50 micrograms per ml. The next step was to test a range of concentration of progesterone and monitor the SPRI response of the binding to one of the top aptomers, which produced the largest SPRI response upon interaction with progesterone. A linear correlation was obtained by increasing the concentration of progesterone injected to the functionalized surface. As it can be shown, the limit of detection was concluded to be 15.75 micrograms per ml, which equals to 50 micromolar, resulting in a response of 0.07% change in reflectivity. In small molecule biosensing, the accurate identification and detection of analyte necessitates highly sensitive uh, capture ligands capable of efficiently binding to the analyte in solution in order to maximize the platform signal. Moreover, it requires that the capture ligands can discriminate between the structurally similar biomolecules that are present in the same complex samples. We examined the specificity of the positive aptomer, X aptomer 5, by testing its detection against a closely related steroid, beta estradiol, that coexists with progesterone in blood serum during the mid-menstrual cycle. Specificity assay was performed under the same conditions as the direct detection and utilized X aptomer 5 with a solution containing beta estradiol. As presented in Figure 4, X aptomer 5 shows significant specificity for only progesterone and showed, neg showed negligible binding to estradiol. There are two established techniques for biomolecule detection with SPI. One is a label free method where you uh, directly detect the analyte. However, if your analyte concentration falls below the limit detection of the instrument, you need to resort to a sandwich type assay in order to amplify the SPRI signal. Here's an example where they use gold nanoparticles tagged to detection antibodies, and the amplification occurred as a result of the coupling between um, a localized surface plasma resonance of, gold nano, uh, of the gold nanoparticles and the propagating surface plasma resonance on the gold film. On a diagnostic front, SPRI assays could have tremendous impact if the capability to perform small molecule sensing at ultra-low concentration is successfully achieved. In this work, we employed nano-enhancers, near-infrared quantum bucks, as special signal amplification probe to generate a detectable signal at very low concentrations of progesterone. First, progesterone was injected followed by the injection of near-infrared quantum dots decorated with a detection aptomer to further highlight the presence of uh, progesterone. A range of concentrations was examined in this setup to determine the lowest detection limit and thus evaluate the sensitivity of the biosensing assay. The limit of detection was determined to be 0.315 nanograms per ml. The concentration profile of the tested concentrations of progesterone is represented in this figure. We were able to improve the limit of detection from 50 micromolar to 5 nanomolar. Label-free small molecule biosensing is a key area in the development of advanced diagnostic tools and an analysis assay that can shed light on numerous biochemical processes. In this study, we developed a biosensing surface capable of performing analysis in a label-free and real-time manner while demonstrating the ability to, to ultra-sensitively and selectively dis distinguish between similarly uh, structured hormones. We anticipate that further investigation to the platform design can extend the diagnostic application to detect a variety of different steroids in complex matrices such as serum and saliva 
simultaneously or independently. Now, this capability for the platform could prove to be particularly important because progesterone is a precursor in a complex steroid-genic gen pathway that includes mineral corticoids, glucocorticoids, testosterone, and estradiol. Horiba provides you with two robust SPRI systems that cater to your research needs. Both systems offer real-time concentration measurements, imaging, and kinetics. Also, they provide the ability to monitor label-free hundreds of interactions simultaneously, not only in buffer systems, but even in complex environments like serum, plasma, and cell lysate. Coupling to other techniques such as MALDI, fluorescence, and electrochemistry is made easy with our SPRI system to accelerate uh, your research. In addition, Horiba offers four types of spotting system, SPRI Arrayer, which prints biomolecules on the chip, SPRI CFM, which uses continuous flow microfluidics to immobilize your ligands, and for customers whose budget is tight, the manual SPRI rare or a hand manual spotter would be a good choice. The second product line is consumables, which consist of different types of chips and reagents. Last, there are several, several software such as SPRI View and Analysis is for the OpenPlex instrument. And the Easy View and Easy Analysis come with the Exoplex. Scrubbergen is a software used to analyze uh, your data. And please visit us at www.sprimaging.com for more information. Also at Horiba, we offer a wide range of uh, analytical tools that cater to uh, many life science applications. And also I invite you to visit uh, our Horiba main site at www.horiba.com slash scientific. And I would like to take the opportunity now to acknowledge my colleagues who worked really hard on this project. Uh, first, uh, Dr. Afad Zaidan, uh, who's, starting, who's standing here on top uh, with glasses, and uh, Ms. Renuka Shivaji, wearing a nice orange shirt, and to your right, uh, Dr. Vince Henrich. Uh, I'd like to thank him a lot for uh, working hard on this project with me, and um, all this work was done at the Joint School of Nanoscience and Nanoengineering. And I would like to uh, also thank you all for all uh, for your undivided attention, and I'll be happy to take any questions at this moment.